Yeah, hi there, and uh, these comments are for Deborah. I am Michael, the uh, lead grammar instructor, and uh, you had a lot of really good points you brought up in your last email, and I want to respond uh, particularly about the signature assignments uh, rubrics for speaking and writing. Now, there's also other uh, grammar instructors who will probably be watching this video, so you guys... Uh, hopefully you'll get some good ideas on this. Now, m what I want to try to do here is to show you how to design a signature assignment plus rubric in three easy steps. Now, I'm relating this, uh, this particular video to level five grammar, right? So, first of all, there's really three things. Uh, you have to read and understand the SLO for the level, first of all. And then you have to actually design the speaking or the writing assignment based on what the SLO is saying. And then, of course, you have to design a rubric there. So the first thing is, is I go to the curriculum map and I'm looking at level five, right? And let's deal with analyze and master all verb tenses and forms in written and spoken discourse. So I, I think it's a good idea for this particular what's called student learning outcome maybe for the first one you can do a speaking task and then for the next one you can do a writing task or depending on how you want to do them you could do a speaking and a writing task for this you could do a speaking and writing task for this one so if you do it that way you have at least four quizzes uh, in your course focusing on the SLOs, but you guys have to determine how you want to do that. Now going back to uh, uh, the actual uh, notes here. So once you understand and you've read the SLO, you have to design the speaking or writing assignment. So I put it right here so I can look at it. So again, analyze and master all verb tenses. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to design a speaking task and there's nothing you can do that will incorporate every possible verb tense in the English language. I think there's about 13 of them. But if you said this, talk about an important decision you had to make when you were young. Now, if they answer this in the spoken, you know, while they're speaking, now you can either have them do a recording with their phone or you can interview each student and ask them the questions and then grade them on the rubric as you go. It's just whatever you think you want to do. Uh, the only thing about, about having students email it to you is if you give it to them as a homework assignment, they're going to go home and they're going to write an essay and then they're going to read it. However, if you do it in class, and I think it's fair, you could give them maybe four or five minutes, maybe ten minutes if you like, to prepare a response, but they don't have, you know, they don't have two or three hours to write it all out, which is what you don't want them to do. You're trying to see what their spontaneous type language is. How, did he, how do they use language when they're uh, conversing with other people? This is what you're trying to measure. So the first one is measuring the past. Then you might say, how does this decision affect you now? Now if you say that, that's going to force them more into the present time frame. But then if you say, is there anything you wish you had done differently? Why or why not? Now that's forcing them into the hypothetical. They might have to say, well, I wish I hadn't, you know, spoken to my dad because it, it caused me a lot of problems or something. So they now have to figure out how to use what's called past uh, impossible type conditions. And if you had a third prompt here, what effect do you think this decision will have on your education, your family, or your personal relationships with your friends? Now, you can phrase the questions however you want. It doesn't really matter. And maybe you don't like my questions, and really that doesn't matter. The main thing is, is you want to frame the speaking task so that it's testing some of the things that you see in this student learning outcome. That's really what your goal is here. So in my first question, I'm trying to see how well the student can speak about the past tense. And then my second question, I'm trying to see how well they can talk about the present and also the hypothetical. And then on my third question is seeing how well they speak in the future.
Okay, now once you've done that, then you have to do the rubric. You have to make a rubric. Now, it's very easy. The 90 to 100 one, it just goes back to the first thing, master all verb tenses. So the first one says, demonstrates mastery of verb tenses in spoken language. So once you get the audio file or you do the interview with the student, if you think they have mastered, they have very good mastery of the verb tenses, they're able to speak... I think in all three areas. They can talk about the past, the present, the hypothetical, and then the future, and they don't have that much difficulty, you're going to put them in the 90 to 100 range. Now 80 to 89, we just kind of make it less and less. Here we'll say demonstrate some mastery in the spoken language, although language is characterized by occasional errors that do not obscure meaning. So there are some errors in the 80 to 89, but you can still get the meaning. There's no major problems. Uh, 70 to 79, you have demonstrates limited control of verb tenses in spoken language. And speech contains frequent errors that obscure meaning at key junctures. Uh, that means if they're, if they're talking about two or three different things in the past and they move from the one idea to the second idea, it's hard for you to understand the transition from the one point to the next point because of the verb tense and the language errors. Uh, so that's why I said sometimes making it difficult to understand the connection of ideas. Now again, you, know, you can do your rubrics. You don't have to do my rubrics here. But remember, the main thing is you start from the SOO here, and if they've mastered all verb tenses, that's going to start with the 90 to 100, then 80 to 89, and 70 to 79, you have demonstrates limited control of verb tenses in spoken language, and speech contains frequent errors that obscure meaning. Well, actually, I think I did that one already. Uh, the, the next one, 0 to 69, demonstrates little or no control of verb tenses in spoken language and speech contains numerous errors that obscure meaning in most parts. So if we take a look at the next one, hold on a second. Okay, so for the next writing task, we have here... It's called uh, Analyze and Master All Complex Sentence Forms in Written and Spoken Language. Now, this is the second SLO. Now, where did I get this from? If we go back to the curriculum map, you see where it says under... This is, again, we're looking at level 5 right now. Building a sentence, modifier sentence structure. So we're over here where it says Analyze and Master all complex sentence forms in written and spoken language. So you can see that. So then we go back to uh, what we're working on right now. We want to now create a writing task that will measure this. And so again, we're just following the same three steps. First step is read and understand the SLO for the level. We've done that. The next step is to design the writing assignment. Now this one is is, is, is really a lot easier to do, I think. You can pretty much do anything. And the main thing you're looking for when they uh, do this one, and remember for your SLOs, uh, I would encourage you not to use multiple choice, true, false, fill in the blank to measure the SLOs for your grammar. I think it's better to actually get a speaking and a writing sample then you can look at that and, and apply the rubrics to that to get a score. So in this case I just used one of my TOEFL questions. It says when a brand new device of modern technology comes out should you buy it immediately or should you wait before you buy it? Give some reasons to support your opinion. Now just based on the question itself they're probably going to need to use what's called conditional. Conditional type sentences. Maybe they also have to use time clauses and they probably have to use uh, what's called cause effect expected result type uh, relationships. So you can probably also expect them to be using a lot of adverb clauses in this type of uh, response. So then you're going to give them maybe 20 or 30 minutes. You might just have them 
write, uh, you know, maybe one, one page, maybe uh, uh, two or three paragraphs or whatever. The main thing is you need a large enough sample so you can accurately determine whether or not the student is demonstrating what we call in writing sentence variety. Really, the writer is using a combination of basic and advanced type sentence structure. Now, if we go back to the uh, SLO again, complex sentence forms, so here's the rubric I would start out with. I would say written response includes complex sentence forms with a high degree of accuracy. They're using maybe conditional clauses, time clauses, they might be using a cause-effect type uh, uh, clauses. So then the next one, 80 to 89, written response uses either basic sentence forms accurately or complex sentence forms with some errors. So if, if it is correct and the whole paragraph is correct or the two paragraphs are correct, you, you have to be the judge on it. If they're avoiding the more complex sentence structure, I don't know how they could do it given that response, but you might score them in this area. Uh, 70 to 79, you have uh, written response has a, has a number of errors in complex sentence forms or uses only basic grammar. How about uses, let's say, basic grammar. Maybe we'll change this one to say with the occasional error. Something like that. So they're, they're basically having errors in both complex and uh, basic grammar. And then you have the last one here, 0 to 69, written response avoids complex sentence forms and even has problems with basic sentence formation. The accumulation of errors make it difficult to understand the meaning of ideas. So again, this rubric is focusing more on what's called complex type sentence forms. And then the other rubric I used was focusing more on what's called verb tenses. Alright, so let's just recap what I just said. I, do, I was just going over maybe three steps, three ways that you can design a signature assignment and rubric. Again, I'll just repeat it one more time. Read and understand the SLO for the level. Number two, then design the speaking or writing assignment. Make sure you, you design it based on what the student learning outcome is. And then number three, then you can de design the rubric from the student learning outcome that's found in the curriculum map. And then I gave you some examples and how you can do this uh, uh, for your grammar course. Now, the other thing uh, I, I think that you mentioned, you said that because you're covering verb tenses, which are located in five different chapters, it's uh, really difficult for you to do everything. So you're saying that you have to drop something from the curriculum. And that's what I wanted to comment on right now. Uh, let me find the curriculum right now. Let me see if I can... Okay, here it is. So let's take a look at, at Level 5 Grammar. So it says here, accurately use all verb tenses, independently reduce adverb adjective clauses with active and passive meanings. Now, these are covered in lower levels. This is covered probably in Level 3 and 4. This is also covered in Level 4. This is covered in Level 4. This is covered in Level 4. Uh, this is also level four. This one, I think, is both level four and five. What I would do is, is um, also gerunds and infinitives is also used in level four. So for you, I think it's more important to focus on the adverb clauses, reducing adverb clauses to adverbial phrases, and then recognize connectives that express cause, effect, contrast, and condition and then recognize conditional sentences and wishes. Your plate is pretty full, believe it or not. It doesn't sound like much, but if you just do those things in level five, you're going to be really busy. I mean, that's going to take you weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks. Now, for example, with, with um, 
verb tenses, or gerunds and infinitives, see if you can deal with those things within the context of, of these areas right here. That would be my comment because if you're trying to teach everything that you see there, uh, it's just going to be really, really tough. There's just too much information. I mean, I, I taught level four grammar for probably more than 10 years. And the only thing I was able to do in 10 weeks, I did really three things. I introduced students into uh, adjective clauses, noun clauses, gerunds, and infinitives. Now, it's not, it's not that I didn't mention verb tenses and all those other things, but I focused mainly in those three categories, and then everything else that I brought up was done within the context of those three topics. Because it is. You, you guys are, are very busy. If you go from level 5 to level 4 to level 3, uh, there's a lot of stuff going on in all those different levels. And it's, you know, it's, it's just almost impossible to do all that. But anyway, those are my comments. And thank you and have a great weekend.